サバイバードクターシュンタロヒダスピークスオン福島アンド広島バイバイバイバイはい。はい。今日聞かない。はい。いいよ。Hello everyone. My name is Shuntaro Hida, and I'm an internal medicine specialist. I was in Hiroshima on August 6th. 1945, when the atomic bomb fell. On March 11th, 2011, a massive earthquake hit eastern Japan. Approximately 20,000 people died or went missing in the disaster, which mainly affected northeastern Japan. In addition to this, A meltdown occurred at Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant, resulting in huge quantities of radiation being leaked. The amount of radiation leaked is said to far exceed the amount released during the Hiroshima atomic bombing. And the accident is not over yet. Although there is not as much as there was at the time of the accident every day, the nuclear plant continued to spew radiation, and large amounts of contaminated water flow into the Pacific Ocean, not only in Fukushima Prefecture, but also 250 kilometers away in Tokyo, a number Of localized hot spots are being observed. Also, according to data from the German Meteorological Service, the leaked radiation is not confined to eastern Japan, it has spread to western Japan as well. The United States Environment Protection Agency. Has announced that uranium 235 levels in the mainland US have been at, the, have been at elevated levels since March 11th. Ah, damn it, woman. 11th and 15th. My just. Okay. The United States Environmental Protection Agency has announced that the uranium 235 levels in the mainland US have been at elevated levels since March 15th. In the southern hemisphere, radiation has been detected as far、well、as Australia. There is no longer any doubt. The substantial amounts of radiation from Fukushima have spread all over the world. For us Japanese, we are all to a greater or lesser extent living near ground zero. And no matter what we do, we have no way to escape from the fallout. Since I'm a doctor who was exposed to radiation myself. A lot of people came to me for advice after the accident. At first, they talked to me about the early symptoms of radiation exposure appearing, appearing in the children. Their diarrhea that never ended. Cancer sores on the inside of the mouths, painful swelling of the throat, or other such symptoms. A lot of mothers also worried about their children's nose blades, 
nose breeds that would just keep going and wouldn't stop. After a while, the parents started coming to see me as well. From Tokyo and Kanagawa, Shizuoka and Yamanashi, saying they had developed the saying they had developed the same symptoms as their children. The reason the symptoms like this were appearing is that the body's mucous membranes are one of the first places where the effects of radiation become apparent. Children whose nasal mucous membranes were harmed experience nosebleeds. Children whose oral mucous membranes were harmed get cancer swords. It's very straightforward. The symptoms that appeared in children after the Fukushima nuclear accident are the same as the ones that emerged over time in large members of people in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Even in those who weren't directly exposed to the bomb, these are believed to be the result of internal exposure to radiation that has been absorbed by the body. The first thing I thought when I heard about the nuclear accident was that the same thing that happened in Hiroshima and Nagasaki was probably going to happen here. Since the radiation released after the accident contains uranium and plutonium, just as was used in the atomic bomb. In the case of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, it was 50 or 60 years later when people who had early symptoms of radiation such as these began to start dying of cancer or leukemia or other diseases. In the case of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, it was 50 or 60 years later when people who had early symptoms of radiation such as these began to start dying of cancer or leukemia or other diseases. Atomic bomb survivors may have lived for 60 years or more, but it's not as though they had been living healthy lives. They spent their lives constantly battling various illnesses, seeing doctors and going in and out of the hospital. So when the Japanese government repeatedly said after the Fukushima accident, that there is no immediate So, when the Japanese government repeatedly said, after the Fukushima accident, that there is no immediate effect on the human body, I was outraged. They also should have said, that the effects might well become apparent in the future. But they made no mention of this at all. Even though the atomic bomb was more than 60 years ago, whether or not it had any effect on those who experienced it is still a problem it is still a problematic question. This has, prompted, this has prompted a group of atomic bomb survivors to start a low shoot, which they feel shortly after the year 
、二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千二千
What's not good for your body? Don't stay up too late. Stop smoking and other advice of that sort. Keep at it, even when it's hard to say. Keep at it, even when it's hard or tiring, and live the best you can each day. When they hear me say that, everyone goes home with a bright eye. When they hear me say that, everyone goes home with a brighter face. I also tell them that it's a mistake just to try to help yourself and their children. You have to do what you can to make the planet a clean place for your children and also for the children and the children after that. Stop nuclear power generation. Get rid of nuclear weapons. When it comes to radiation exposure, these two things are your responsibility. So go out and do them. I tell them. And if while bearing this advice in mind, your child gets a nosebleed or something out of the ordinary happens. It's important that you record it. I tell them, it's important to do this because the scary thing about radiation is that you never know when or how the effects will appear. People who are exposed now are not going to develop cancer right away. People who are exposed now are not going to develop cancer right away. Before that happens, there are chronic changes that occur. If you keep a record, down the road you can refer back to it when an issue arises. This is extremely useful when determining this is extremely useful when determining if something is related to the effects of radiation or not. I Next, I like to talk about the atomic bombing in Hiroshima. Due to a string of consider due to a string of coincidences, due to a string of coincidences, I became a military doctor. I was born in Hiroshima on January 1st, 1970. But because my father, a bank worker, was often transferred for work, we lived after that in Oita, Tokyo, Yokohama, and Osaka, among other places. In August of the year, before the bomb, when I was 27, I was stationed on active duty as a military doctor at the Hiroshima Army Hospital. At that time, we were beyond all hope of winning the war. We would never say it out loud, but even within the Army, there wasn't one person who thought we could still win. The Imperial Headquarters announced 
we won, we won. Everyone knew it was a lie. We were an army hospital after all. When wounded, when wounded soldier were taken back from the battle lines in China, we of course heard how things were going at the front lines. Whichever soldier we asked, they all said we were being annihilated. They all said we were being annihilated or that everyone from division commander down had been killed. Not one person said anything about winning. So we knew that we were being battered and beaten in this war. That was how things stood as we approached August 6. The army hospital where I was stationed was situated about 600 meters from the center of the hypocenter. So when the bomb was dropped all of the 598 people who were inside except for three were killed instantly. I would have died instantly along with my colleagues. I would have died instantly along with my I would have died instantly along with my colleagues and patients. But it just so happened that I was in town called Hesaka, about six kilometers from the blast. And that was what saved me. Just to on that day, before the sun came up, on that day, before the sun came up, I think around two o'clock or so in the morning, the six-year-old grandson of a former acquaintance of mine had developed heart valve disease. His grandfather came to ask me to examine his grandfather came to ask me to examine examine him. So I headed out to the house. That house call changed my fate forever. After treating him that night, I woke up the next morning around 8 o'clock. The child was sleeping beside me because it was a farmhouse. There were large sliding shutter doors that were standing open, giving me a good view of the blue sky. I had overslept and wanted to hurry back. So I took one more look at the child to make sure there were no other problems that needed seeing too. I didn't want him to have another attack, so I was going to give him a shot of sedative before I left. I took out a small syringe I took out a small syringe in preparation and was holding the tip of the needle up to push the air out when I saw a single B-29 flying high in the sky over the city. At that time, there were multiple 
B-29s flying over Hiroshima every day. But not one bomb was ever dropped. Everyone thought it was strange. And we had all mentioned to each other that for whatever reason, no bomb were war. Everyone thought it was strange, and we had all mentioned to each other that for whatever reason, no bombs were falling on Hiroshima. When I looked into it later, I learned that the U.S. had been saving Hiroshima as a site to drop the atomic bomb on. Two years before that, they had decided on using the bomb against Japan, and by that spring, they had decided on Hiroshima as a place to drop it. They wanted to keep the city unharmed for the purpose of studying the force of the bomb after the war was over. After considering Hiroshima's flat terrain, they chose it as they chose it as the very first candidate. So I didn't think much about it when I saw the plane. It was only a single aircraft. I took the child's hand and prepared to give him the injection. At that instant, I was based in a flash of light, like the beam of a laser. At exactly the same instant, the parts of my body that were exposed became extremely hot. I was so surprised I covered my eyes with both palms and lay down flat on the tatami mat floor. I held still for a while, but I couldn't hear anything and nothing seemed to be happening, so I carefully took my hands off of my eyes while I lay on the floor and looked towards Hiroshima, where the light had come from. Light. At that moment, I saw the ball of fire that appeared right after the bomb exploded. I saw a circle of fire, like a ring placed on its side, appear in the blue sky. I think the number of people I think the number of people who actually saw this happen must be extremely small. In the middle of that the few white clouds appeared, but they soon began to grow bigger and bigger, affixed to the inside rim of the ring of fire. At the same time, it started to grow into a large fireball, like the sun. It was shining in shades of gold and silver, red and green. And this may be a terrible thing to say, but it was more beautiful than anything I had even seen. I couldn't see the city underneath it, but I could see the ocean. I was watching light as a mushroom cloud started forming. Above all else, I was petrified. Above all else, I was petrified. 
it was the first time I had seen anything too massive. I was scared out of my wits and for a long time just lay there watching. Next, a long black cloud like thing suddenly appeared over the row of mountains between me and Hiroshima. At the same time, the clouds were rising higher and higher above the fireball and the pillar of fire appeared underneath. At the same time, the clouds were rising higher and higher above the fireball and the pillar of fire appeared underneath it. Everyone always talks about the mushroom cloud. But when the mushroom cloud appeared, I also remember a pillar of fire appearing, going down underneath the cloud. In front of the fire pillar, a wave of black clouds came surging over the mountains towards me and poured into the village in far. The tiles on the roof of the elementary school at the foot of the mountains came flying off like leaves and I was scooped up by the far wind and blown across the other side of the room. That's when the roof of the large farmhouse was torn off and mud from the thatched. That's when the roof of the large farmhouse was torn off and mud from the thatched roof came crashing down on us. The child and I were burned the child and I were buried in the mud, but I pulled him out, ran outside and put him down on the ground. I took off his shirt and exposed his muddy chest and was about to put my... I took off his shirt and exposed his muddy I took off his shirt and exposed his muddy chest and was about to put my stethoscope on. Stethoscope. 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 To his heart when I noticed it had gotten lost somewhere. So I put my ear to his chest instead, but it was blocked with mud. I cleaned out my ear and put it to the child's chest to listen to his heart. It was a sound of a sick heart, but it was still beating. Relieved that the child was okay, I ran to the fields by the mountain behind the house and called loudly to the grandfather. I'm leaving the child here. He's okay. Then I borrowed a bicycle and rode it out of the village towards Hiroshima. On the road to Hiroshima, I met my first atomic bomb survivor. Or Hibakusha. It was on a gravel road just wide enough for two carts to squeeze by each other. There something jumped out at me. It didn't look human. It was completely black with a bunch of old rags hanging down from its chest and waist. From its hand, which it was bo 
from its hand, which it has holding up limply. Black water was dripping out. Its head was unnaturally large. The place where eyes should have been, if it were human, were swollen up like two steamed buns. There was no nose. Its upper and lower lips were swollen so badly that they took up half of its face. There was not a single hair on its head, which was completely scalded. There was not a single hair on its head, which was completely scorched. It was slowly coming up to me, and I was scared it would make a lunch for me. So I lay my bicycle down and backed away, but it tripped over my bicycle and fell to the ground. Oh no, what did I do? That creature was human, I thought, and ran to his side. Hold on, I said to him, and because I'm a doctor, I instinctively Hold on, I said to him, and because I'm a doctor, I instinctively went to fear for pass. But I was shocked when I touched his hand. All the skin has peeled off, and it was a slippery and it was a slippery and red. And then I realized when I got a better look at them that what I had thought were dirty rags was actually his skin, which had peeled off and was hanging from his body. The black water dripping down was blood. I only found this asked quite a bit after the fact, but at ground level, the heat rays from the warm were said to attain temperatures of 6,000 degrees Celsius, but I had thought my rags was skin that had been charred by the heart and come right off, then being peeled away by the breast. I was in complete shock. This was the first time in my life I had seen anything like this. As I was telling him to hold on, he began to teach with conversions and then went still. That was the last of him, the first hibaksha I saw. I put my hand together in prayer and as I was about to start off again, I saw I put my hands together in prayer and as I was about to start off again, I saw an endless line of others just like him coming in my direction, thinking that it would be impossible to continue on the road with all these people. I left the road on top of the bank and jumped into the river, which came up to my waist. I walked that way all the way down to Hiroshima. My heart was racing and I was terrified. I was heading toward the flaming red pillar of fire. After all, I hurried down the river and came to the place where the river entered Hiroshima and split into two. 
around this point the smoke started crawling up around me and I could see almost nothing. A strong wind was blowing and stirring up the water and I was being showered with water from above. When I crossed under the bridge, the wind changed and the smoke cleared and I was finally able to see what was in front of me. And what I saw first was pure red fire. The opposite river bank had a stone wall with a row of tightly packed houses beyond it and the whole row was up in flames. Lots of people were running out of the burning houses and jumping into the river. One minute burning bright red and the next jumping naked into the river. Some people were simply washed away. I suddenly realized that the whole river was full of people, all walking through the water. Everyone was holding their hands out in front of them, like ghosts, and all of their faces were severely burned. They were they were horrendous, they were horrendous faces, but they were still alive and walking, trying to escape from this hell. I looked in the river and happened to see a woman floating past on her back, her long hair flowing around her. Her upper body was naked. I could see she was a woman because of her breasts, but her face was badly burned and absolutely horrific. I'll never forget it. The dead bodies of tiny babies also floated past down at the bottom. The dead bodies of tiny babies also floated past down at the bottom of the river. The river was teeming with corpses. I stood there for a while, but I couldn't get into the city and there was nothing I could do to help. I felt bad, but I put my hands together in prayer for the people dying around me and turned back up the river to Hesaka village. When I came to the road that I remembered led to Hesaka, it was already full of people crawling and walking down it. There were a number of corpses too. Everyone was climbing over them and I had no choice but to go down this road as well. So I started walking, being careful not to step on any bodies. Right after entering the road there, right after entering the road, there was an elementary school with a village hall on the corner. The roof of the village hall had been blown off and the U-shaped elementary school, which was half intact, had half of its roof missing too. There were so many people lying in the schoolyard that it was impossible to put your foot down anywhere. Three of my fellow army doctors, ten nurses, and ten hygienists were there. 
three of my fellow army doctors, ten nurses, and ten hygienists, hygienists were there in the elementary school because it just so happened that the Hiroshima army was planning on opening a hospital branch there. The very next day, on the 7th, an order had been issued to evacuate the hospital in Hiroshima. And so they had opened the branch hospital in Hesaka's elementary school. The hospital was supposed to start treating patients right away. But the only thing that was ready was the people. There were no medical instruments available. So we got what we could from the village and started emergency treatment. The next day, the number of doctors increased to 15. But that was just a drop in the back end. Mm.